Hi friends, it's Brittany at Ink and Papyrus and welcome back to my channel. As you may recall, in the last video I made this gorgeous mermaid themed journal with hot glue and paint. And now it's time to fill that journal with some pages. So as you can see here, I have dug out a bunch of supplies. I have dug into my stash and I've gotten paint and paint markers and some stamps and some stencils and in this video regardless of whatever theme journal you're working on i hope to inspire you to just dive headfirst in your stash grab some basic supplies and turn just plain old copy paper into beautiful 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 signature pages so as you can see i've already been experimenting with some of the supplies making some signature pages though those flower pages do not belong in the pile ah a turtle okay he belongs he can stay so i'm not going to be going and doing uh very detailed paintings with you guys like these watercolor paintings though some would argue they're not very detailed i have been working on that Yes, I have been practicing my watercolor painting skills, whether you can tell or not. I have come a little bit of a long way. Um, so, but anyways, today we're just going to be playing with some very basic supplies. And I'm going to show you with stencil stamps, paints, we're going to be doing a lot of mark making. Um, I'm going to be making a lot of more abstract pages instead of detailed paintings because I want to show you guys how to make some beautiful signature pages that are sort of abstract enough that you can do anything with them that you want once you put them in the journal. You don't exactly have to know their purpose. Okay, so I'm going to start very basic here just with acrylic uh, paint markers and a stencil. See, so it doesn't take much and some of these papers I actually end up doing very little to them uh, just because I want to give myself freedom to kind of do whatever I want with them once they go in the journal. Don't be afraid to add little doodles or highlights. That's exactly what I'm doing to this shell um, with this green paint marker. And while I have my stencils and paint markers out, I'm just going to add a little bit of detail to this acrylic painting that I did. Now, not all of my pages are going to be this detailed like I was telling you, but I had so much fun um, painting these. I've always wanted to learn how to paint waves. Um, it's like it's a whole skill on its own, but I was just playing around with the different layers of the blue coloring and how much room to put in between each of the layers to kind of give the illusion of the waves breaking. Um, so yeah, I, it's a learning process, but I really like the way that this came out and I thought I would just add a couple of birds. I end up adding a little bit of sandcastle um, to the side and I love this page. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. I probably will sort of leave it as is in the journal um, just because I wouldn't want to cover it up or anything like that. So here's where the magic comes in. Just no pre-planned, nothing, just fun doodling. As you can see, I have a seahorse on the other side. So I just decided to kind of stick with the gold theme to complement the seahorse and start doing some doodling. Um, I love the the paint markers. If you can tell, I do flip it over a couple of times just to make sure it's not bleeding through. And um, you do get a little bit of an impression on the other side, but not a whole lot. So I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm just doing some doodling again. Um, many of these pages I went for abstract designs because I want to be able to sort of do whatever I want with them once I get them in my journal. Um, if you're wondering, I have no idea where uh, where these paint markers came from. I actually got them at my local thrift store. I got a whole um, set of them for like under five dollars. Uh, so yeah, check out your local thrift store. You never know what you might find. Um, so yeah, so I'm just coming in with my my paint markers here. I'm making a set of squiggly lines. I have no idea what to say other than. I'm just continuing to make squiggly lines. It's so fun, so relaxing. Um, don't overthink these. Just play with your supplies is the best advice that I can give to you. Okay. 
And really, what would a project be without coming with some liquid pearls or some stickles? Um, to me, they just look like little pearls, which really fits with the whole mermaid theme. So, you know, I have to say not bad for just a single acrylic paint marker and some stickles and a completely not thought out random design. I actually really like this. So here I take a paint marker and start making random bubbles and I do it just by making little sort of circles with spirals um, to sort of give them some highlight. And then I take my stencil and just get out my paint marker and uh, with a couple of different uh, colors of paint marker, I start just coloring in the fish. Uh, and I love how this turned out. Um, so simple. See, this just goes to show you, you when you feel stuck, just start getting out your supplies and playing with them. I had really no idea what I was doing with this design and um, I just started doing some doodling and um, playing around with my markers. And uh, I love this. These little fish, they are so darling. And don't forget the seaweed. So I get it. This is turning into a very ocean slash nautical themed video, which not all of you are into, but I hope you'll use the techniques that I've given you and use that as inspiration to create some signature pages of your own with supplies you have laying around, regardless of what themed pages you are making. Okay, again, more paint. What can I say? I have a lot of acrylic paint I need to use up. As you can see, the, the paint I'm using here, not the gold, but the green is kind of chalky. As I was telling you earlier, I tried to use it in a project. It didn't work out all that well, and I think it's because of its chalky texture. I think it's just old, but it worked perfect for this project. So I was so excited to be able to use it up. Here, I am simply doing some abstract swirl thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just splattered some paint down on the page and I'm just gonna go with it. And I'm just gonna try and paint in between the gold lines, swirl this green paint. I love the green and the gold. It screams mermaid and I, I think it's a perfect abstract design and again I'm going for designs where I can regardless of how I decide to use the paper what I decide to do with it once it's in the journal it's a pretty abstract background it's bright but it's not going to really take away from whatever I decide to do with it I hope that makes sense Okay, I'm having so much fun with this paint and it's because it, it's no pressure. It's designed to be really abstract. I can just have fun. So here I'm simply blending the green and the pink together. Again, fabulous mermaid colors. Um, I want to keep the papers in this journal really bright and happy as opposed to very vintage ocean themed journals I've made in the past. This is going to be so bright like vomit green bright and I'm so excited. So I'm just blending the colors together trying to create a background that I can do something with later. Um, I actually end up coming in with a stencil of a flower, maybe it's a hibiscus, you guys would probably know better than me, um, but I just wanna create a very kind of neutral uh, ombre sort of background so that I can put a design on top of this. Okay, I don't know exactly what kind of flower this is supposed to be, but I love this stencil so much. It's so tropical. So I'm just coming in here with a brighter um, pink uh, over the uh, lighter pink and the green. And again, this may be one that I don't do a whole lot with this page because I don't want to really cover up the flower and doing anything else significant may be too busy. I don't know. I haven't decided. Maybe I'll just clip something on top of it. Um, I do when I design pages, I do try and think what would the purpose of this page be? What might I want to do with this? So I have a good idea as to how many detailed pages I want to create, how many pages I want to kind of leave with 
more white space so I sort of get a good mix if that makes sense I don't want to create um, all pages with you know with very intricate designs or else I'll never do anything with them because um, I won't want to cover them up so I like to create a variety of pages and that's why I sort of do like to have a plan as to what I may want to do with the page as I'm decorating it so sometimes when I work in my journals, I like to create similar type pages and include one um, page in each signature. And so I decided to make a couple of these tropical flower paper. Um, I'll probably have three or four signatures in this journal and it would be nice to be able to include one in each signature. I also had some pretty pink paint on my paintbrush and I was too lazy to clean it. So I thought, why? why not like the stencils um wet <laughs> like it's dirty i don't really want to clean go clean it i'll just make another one um so here i'm coming in with this gold it's again it's like from the the thrift store it's not the best paint and you can tell it's kind of old it's actually really liquidy so kind of the opposite problem of the other paints but it just works it's um when you're when you're designing um, pages like this you kind of just can just go with the flow it's really no pressure you can see that when I lift this stencil up it's not as clean of a print because that gold was so um, thin and liquidy but it really doesn't bother me I still love how this came out and as I always say when in doubt spray a little oxide on it I love the dark rich purple slash um, pink contrast uh, up against that gold so I had some thicker pieces of cardstock laying around, so I thought, well, why not take these stencils and make some journal cards? I had some smaller size stencils um, at the ready, so, you know, I thought, well, why the heck not? I have to say, um, this gold paint was not a very good choice. It's too thin, and so it kind of bled through um, the stencil. It didn't give me a good crisp image. So if you're using stencils to uh, create journaling cards like this or signature pages, I'd recommend using either um, a thinner paint, maybe modeling paste, uh, something like that. So uh, if you are insistent upon using a certain paint, but it is too thin, maybe try thickening it. I wonder if cornstarch would work. I've never tried it myself. Um, the one thing I did try recently in um, when I made that journal cover and piped the paint into the hot glue silhouettes was I used uh, something called Floetrol or um, a knockoff of it. It is great paint thinner, um, just, in case you're wondering, um, obviously uh, that is not the problem at this point. Um, I need to find something to thicken this paint up. But anyways, uh, that's for a different day, I guess. I love this stencil here that I designed with the purple paint. I think it's because it sort of looks like scales to me, like a mermaid tail. Um, so yeah, I, I can't wait to include this page. And actually I kind of recreated this using several different, uh, paints and I will probably be including each of these pages in a signature of the journal. Here I'm just working on some more doodling with my paint pens and I'm making random shapes here that, uh, are meant to look like the tail of a mermaid. Okay, and again here, it's the name of the game is just repeating abstract patterns so that depending on what you decide to do with the pages once you bind them in your journal, you can cover part of the page and not lose your design. Or if you want to put something a little bit more detailed over it, it doesn't, the page itself doesn't detract away from whatever you decide to put in the journal. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Here I just have a stencil and I'm laying it down um, over the copy paper and coming in with some acrylic paint. Don't forget if you have um, paint left over on the stencil, one of the best ways to clean it up I think is just mopping up the paint with paper and then you have two pages with designs on them. Easy as one, two, three. Um, when I start to, when my paint on the paintbrush starts to dry, I just come in with water and start going over the stencil and the paper with uh, some water and that spreads the paint around. 
it will cause some wrinkling of the paper but I don't mind that I like the distressed look I do like a little bit of the wrinkling I don't want all the pages to look perfect I want to move away from um, them looking like they were copy paper so I like this um, look obviously if you don't like the wrinkling then don't do this so back I am with those acrylic paint pens I love these so much once I got the hang of just figuring out when to apply pressure on the tip of the pen when it would start to get a little bit dry that's really the only like learning curve other than that these are so easy to use and um, I just got out my word stencil uh, traced some letters and then started coming in with random little squiggles that look like waves or at least they do to me and some dots and yeah a whole lot of randomness So as I told you, there is absolutely nothing fancy about this video. There is probably nothing new in terms of technique that you've, uh, that you haven't seen before, but this has really changed the way that I put together my journals in the sense, especially when I'm making very, uh, th specific themed journals, it's very hard to gather pages that fit with a specific theme if you are putting together a mermaid journal like i am you know you pretty much would have to default to buying digital images and there's nothing wrong with that right it's just this is so much fun this is so bright and you can put so much of you into the journal when you start with signature pages that um kind of scream you and your taste. So this isn't necessarily a background page, but I wanted to show you guys this anyways because I really enjoyed this so much. As you guys know, I've been working on my watercolor skills, which were really non-existent to begin with. So hopefully that resonates with some of you and inspires some of you who think you can't do it. You can. Um, so I'm still in the very, very basic phases and um, I decided I wanted to paint a palm tree. So what I did here was I just took something that uh, was circular. I traced a circle and that helps me uh, keep my leaves within a certain distance. And um, I pulled up a picture on my phone. I just think it's a little bit easier that way. There are a lot of um, doodling tutorials on Pinterest where you can pull up a kind of a gross step-by-step uh, -step process of doodling something and I found that having the item in front of me gives me a little bit more confidence and um, doodling it first as opposed to painting it first has helped me a lot as well and that way it doesn't feel like as big of a commitment you can always go back in and change something if you don't like it so yeah, so you'll see me um, just, I'm making the branches of the palm tree, sort of a really loose drawing. Then we'll come in with some watercolor paints. And yes, it's very basic, but I, listen, I'm starting from scratch here. So I actually really like the way this turned out. This was actually really relaxing for me to paint. I actually just got a new um, sketchbook and I have challenged my, it's a sketchbook with watercolor paper and I've challenged myself to using it regularly. So we'll see if I can keep to that. But just like anything else, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it, the more confident you get with your skills. As you can see, I am the beginner of all beginners.
almost done. I'm just giving the palm tree trunk a little bit more detail and then I will be done. I have to say I'm actually pretty proud with how this came out. I think I could have definitely painted the palm fronds a little bit better. I didn't quite get the color scheme right but this is why you just have to do it and practice. As you see, I am no painter by any stretch. And in fact, I still watch a lot of YouTube channels for inspiration um, and techniques because I am the, like I said, the beginner of beginners. But, and you know, I'm never gonna be a painter. That's not what I do. But I realized that if I can just learn to paint some very basic things in my journals, I think, it opens the door to a lot of other possibilities when doing journal spreads and so even though it's really not something i am good at and it's going to take a lot of practice it's something that i've committed to being better at i'm tired of having painter's envy Speaking of painting very basic things, these swirl flowers I am obsessed with and this is literally as basic as it gets. Just take one color, whether it be pink or blue, red, purple, whatever, and pick, either take a palette and dilute uh, the color down uh, or maybe you have like, for example, you can see my palette has like three or four different color purples and just go from maybe bright in the center and uh, some some darker more stark pigment on the outside and kind of move your way on in just use different brush strokes maybe blend the lines a little bit keep some separation so they are clearly uh, petals and like it's this is literally the easiest way to make a flower Sometimes when you don't know where to go, just start spraying and flicking stuff and depending on what you see after you start, that's the direction you should go and that's absolutely what I did here. I sprayed down some distress oxide and ended up with these like three little rings and I thought wow they do kind of look like a flower bud in the middle and these would make great flowers. So I just start flicking on some purple because again I, I really am liking the um, bright uh, pinks, purples, and turquoises for this journal and um, before I knew it I just started making little marks and circles to create the flower buds and um, I realized I hadn't really used my white acrylic paint pen yet and I realized well this is perfect. The white paint pen looks amazing when doodled on um, the Distress Oxide and the other paints and I just went to town. So as I was telling you before, make sure when you are doing this, especially if you're creating all of the pages you're going to use in your journal, make sure you are creating different, not just different style papers, but make sure you are creating some papers with maybe a lot of design on them if you want, but then leaving other pages blank. Then um, maybe uh, covering the center of some page and leaving the edges blank. And then maybe some pages you um, decorate only the edges like I did here and leave the center blank. And that will give you a variety of pages so that when you bind your journal together and you start decorating, uh, you are not limited. And by limited, I just mean limited by the kinds of decorations you can put in your journals or the types of page layouts that you can do. This looks so simple because it is. I am simply mark making with my paintbrush and I'm just making a note of the um, way I use my brush to kind of create different textures and shapes. Some of them I drag a little bit um, and I think I was going for uh, waves here maybe, but that's the best thing about the abstract mark making. It doesn't really have to look like anything. 
And if you think it just looks like blobs and you don't find it interesting, just come in with a darker color like I do. I come in with a darker color over the light blue, drag it a little bit to kind of mix the paint together, um, and just keep layering until you're happy with it. More abstract swirl patterns. I told you I couldn't get enough of these and it's just so simple. Um, I love the way the liquid pearls come in when you kind of swirl around in a pattern. And like I said, I love the way the acrylic paint feels, especially when you cover most of it. it just gives the paper a really nice soft texture. So this may be one of my favorite layouts. I am literally just doing a stamp of a stamp. I wet my uh, stamp pad with water and then just plop it on down and it kind of gives that window look. And I almost think of it as not like a specimen card, but like a window into something. And I like putting things in the windows. And while I'm deciding what to actually put in the windows, I just decide to come in. There's still a lot of white space, so I just come in with that blue paint I have left over from the cover of the Mermaid Journal and just start splattering some paint. Now, the blue paint is uh, thinned because I kind of, I didn't do an acrylic pour per se, but I did pour it on my journal cover and it needed to be thinned down. So this is paint that I probably wouldn't want to necessarily use for another project. So I decided that I was going to keep making these journal pages because one, it's so much fun. It's so relaxing. I love it. But two, I have to get rid of all of these containers of this thinned paint. Paint. One of the easiest, fastest way to make really pretty pages is to just take Distress Oxide and spray directly on the stencil. And then once you have sprayed, take another piece of paper to mop up the rest of the ink. And now you have two really pretty pieces of paper ready to put in your journal. And of course, more doodling. There's something that's so relaxing about this whole process because you don't have to be precise. You can truly just have fun with it and you can tell yourself that if you don't like the way some of these pages come out, well, they're not in the journal yet, so you haven't committed to anything. And if you do decide it to put in your journal and decide what to do with it later, you can always cover it up. So this should be your excuse to just go no holds bar, try some different techniques, play around and have fun. So the watercolors inspired me to make a bright flower garden using the colors that I typically associate with mermaids. And again, this is probably a page that I won't cover up. It's very detailed. I end up just filling it with flowers from um, edge to edge and I love how this came out.
the flowers are really imprecise and kind of wispy it's always a little bit harder to paint with a lot of detail i think on plain copy paper because you want to limit the amount of water you're putting down on the copy paper otherwise it just it gets really 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 wrinkled i don't like my pages that wrinkled so you know to like put a bunch of water and um do uh, wet on wet painting is a little bit difficult so you don't really get all the full spectrum of colors i hope that makes sense um so you're pretty much always painting wet on dry um so it does limit you but i don't know i still love how this came out and where there was white space i just kept adding adding flowers um, I tried to add some different kinds of stems, do a little bit of highlighting, add as much detail as I could. Um, and I really want to try this project uh, in my watercolor sketchbook with actual watercolor paper. So with this paper I wanted to leave mostly blank. I just painted another watercolor flower. I was still in the watercolor flower mood and stenciled a word on top of some watercolor paint that I had just put down on the paper. So I really only have a few pages I have left that I will need to make to fill out this journal and I decide to once again go back in and try and use some of that metallic green paint that is really really old and chalky and I decide to make a few more swirl designs to round the page out. Wow I absolutely love this dark blue on this lighter green. A lot of times after the pages dry you will find that they wrinkle up a little bit and the edges curl. No worries, just put them under something heavy. I put some paint tins on these uh, and then I ended up actually putting a um, plastic uh, storage container that weighed a lot more over it and it flattened the pages out beautifully. So guys, I can't tell you how much fun this whole process was. I can't impress upon you enough. If you, especially if you are making a very specifically themed journal, the best way to make signature pages for your journal is just to grab your supplies and start making. It doesn't matter if it's abstract, if you're making doodles, just go with it. The process is so relaxing and you haven't found these pages in your journal yet, so this is the time to try new things and if you don't like it, you can always cover it up. I enjoyed this process so much. I found this to be so fun, so relaxing. I tried some different supplies that I've never used before, like those acrylic paint pens, um, and I had such a good time doing this. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did and you found value in this, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I can't wait to see you the next time.